Hello, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are and whenever you watch this video. Uh, welcome to this video. My name is Jelmer van Ast, founder and CEO of Conference Compass. And this is a bit of a different video than I uh, record usually. Uh, I've received a bunch of questions and I'll be answering the questions this time. Uh, so let's just get started. First question. Uh, does your platform offer uh, its own built-in live streaming services? Yes, good question. And, and yes, it does. Yeah, we have integrated uh, live streaming, uh, native live streaming into our platform in a way that uh, you as an organizer just doesn't have to worry about it. Uh, you can simply create your virtual rooms in your event uh, from our studio interface and they're just there. They're right, av rightly available in the app, in the mobile app and in the, uh, in the browser app. And the attendees can access the rooms, speakers, moderators can access uh, their dashboards and uh, they're ready to go. There you go. Built in live stream. Second question. What are the types of virtual rooms we offer? Right. Um, well, there are three types of virtual rooms that use our built-in live streaming uh, services. The first type is, let's say, the most popular one for conferences. In particular, it's what we call a moderated session room. This is your classical session setup, room setup for a session that has uh, a series of speakers, a moderator or a chairperson uh, moderating the session, um, introducing the speakers, speakers taking turn to present with their slides or with uh, sharing their screen and uh, for instance have panel discussions as well and those virtual rooms have all the capabilities for interaction and engagement you would expect uh, speakers can include voting questions so polling questions uh, allowing the attendees to uh, to vote on uh, on certain cases and see the responses on screen in real time they're being recorded as well so that's pretty awesome uh, but also q a is available chat um, and yeah, different formats, um, not just uh, speaker and slides in a live setting, but also pre-recordings uh, are available here. Uh, the second type of room we offer is what we call a round table room. This is where uh, a maximum of 15 people can join the room and participate with their microphone and camera uh, in, in the session. The session is typically hosted by someone presenting slides, presenting a paper or a poster at scientific conferences and well the room is open uh, opened by the host attendees can enter can interact with the speaker can listen to uh, to uh, to the talk and ask questions um, yeah really live with their microphone and camera so this is really a session that is built uh, for more engaging interactive workshops perhaps or you know roundtable meetings um, there you go the third type of virtual room is the private room. So networking, especially networking, requires at a virtual setting, you know, to be connected with your video. Uh, so you can see each other, you can really have a meaningful conversation. And built into our platform, that's the third type of room, are the, are the private meeting rooms. Typically initiated by one person inviting the other for a meeting. Right out of the platform, the other person receives a notification, accepts the invite, connection is being made and both can access the virtual room from their personal schedule or from their notifications. Uh, there you go, so three types of virtual rooms. Your moderated sessions, roundtable sessions and private meetings. Uh, third question, how can we make the sponsors and exhibitors more visible or well represented and how can they interact with attendees? Good questions as well. Uh, sponsors, uh, are crucial to many kinds of events um, for the economics of the events, right? So uh, if you organize an event, you want to make sure that your sponsors can have the return on their investment. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have a very, uh, very powerful, let's say virtual booth available for the, for the sponsors or sponsor profile, company profile, which is uh, customizable, um, has a you know, background, a banner from the from the sponsor, uh, colors of the sponsor, and um, uh, the sponsor can uh, include brochures, videos, any types of research, resources, and even a schedule uh, with different sessions like product demos or you know roundtable meetings, uh, any kind of meeting or session the sponsor is you know agreed on with the uh, with the organizer. 
So that's almost like your own mini event within the overall uh, yeah, main event, uh, a mini event per company. Um, and there are all these ways to interact. So not just in those virtual rooms, as I described before, uh, with asking questions, voting and all of that, but there's also a chatbot, chat box, I should say, uh, where attendees, uh, you know, approaching the booth can uh, send their messages, engage with the representatives, and from there break out <coughs> into private meeting rooms with those representatives. They can also uh, approach those representatives directly and uh, network with them, uh, chat with them, and also break out into uh, into private meeting rooms. Um, all those interactions are also being captured and made available in the analytics dashboard and as an organizer you can share with your exhibitors and sponsors in yeah, engagement interactions uh, engagement analytics the kpis really of how many people attended the booth how many chat messages were being exchanged how many meetings were created and uh, those kind of things so meaningful interactions and measurable as well uh, the fourth question is how to best communicate with moderators and speakers and what do they need to do? Good question. And this almost goes beyond the technology of the platform. It's really about how you organize your virtual event and how you organize your communication with your moderators and speakers. Um, well, first of all, straight out of the platform, you can upload your list of moderators and speakers, like you can upload your list of attendees or connect it with your registration service. Um, you'd invite your moderators and speakers to their session. They would receive an email with a personalized secure link to access their speaker or moderator dashboard. And this email is a great place to introduce some uh, first steps or next steps for those people to do. Um, these are not just technical steps like sign in, create a password, access your dashboard, upload your slides, but perhaps also more practical, um, practical messages about uh, when the rehearsal takes place, when they're uh, supposed to go online before the session starts, uh, perhaps um, giving some best practices of how to use your microphone and uh, camera and make sure you are you know, well set up for for a great virtual session. Um, then when those speakers and moderators access our backend, they'll get some instructions there too. And um, they have a chance to rehearse. So play around with the platform, to see how it works to upload your slides, share your screen, um, you know, test your microphone and camera, just make sure you're ready to go. Uh, and another great thing they can do is to pre-record their presentation. At least speakers can pre-record their presentation. Um, obviously, this uh, is very much uh, relying on what you as a conference organizer have, um, you have, uh, have decided for your event, if you even allow speakers to you know, present um, from a pre-recording instead of presenting live. But if you do, and in, in many cases, it's a, it's a wise idea to be more inclusive to speakers, perhaps signing in from a completely different time zone, making it very impractical for them to be there live. Or maybe from a risk management perspective to make sure those pre-recordings are there and you don't rely on the speakers having a proper you know, internet connection and not experiencing any technical issues on the, on the live event. So pre-recording means they can, on their own time in, um, in the comfort of their uh, home or office, uh, record their presentation, they upload the slides, turn on their camera microphone, click record and record the presentation. They can watch it, um, see if they are satisfied and then either keep it or give it another try. And those pre-recordings are available then to moderators immediately. Uh, that means no need to send or export uh, the pre-recording, send it via email <coughs> and then upload it elsewhere. No, they're available straight away. So all different things uh, you can communicate with your moderators and speakers just to make sure that they know what's expected and we have the technology in the platform to make them, uh, make them, uh, make them give their presentations. All right, uh, fifth question and last question. 
does your app, web app, offer networking opportunities and what kind? Yes, well, our platform offers all kinds of networking opportunities and the question states, uh, does your app or web app offer them? Uh, yes, on both platforms, our mobile app and browser-based uh, app, they are connected through the cloud to the same, uh, to the same database um, and attendees can sign in and use the app on their mobile phone or tablet, but they can also sign in on the web. And it's just one profile. You can start a conversation on one device and connect and, and continue it on, the, uh, on, on your computer in the browser. So first of all, all networking opportunities are available on both platforms, both types of uh, interfaces. And that allows just from the start to, for instance, start a conversation um, when, uh, when you're on the move from your phone and then be continuing it during the virtual event when you're behind your, your, your laptop um, and you may not want to use your phone, just use the convenience of your bigger screen. So what kind of network opportunities are there? Well, um, all sorts. So chat, I mentioned that. I mentioned earlier the appointments with the private room, so you can schedule an appointment with someone else. Um, if it's a live on-site event, you can say, well, let's meet in front of the coffee room, coffee tables. But if it's a virtual event or even a hybrid event, you can say, let's do a virtual room. It's built in, as I explained uh, earlier, and that allows for just out of the box having your private video call. Um, you can connect like your um, your way to build your network by connecting to others. They'll receive an invite, they accept it or reject it, and you're part of each other's uh, other's network, so you can more easily connect with each other or share more information to the people you are uh, connected with. Um, so there are really three ways. Uh, the best way, I think, for networking at events is really through the sessions. So obviously you can find someone just through the attendee list, uh, but I think the most meaningful way to network is uh, when you're in a session, you're engaged, you're asking questions, other people ask questions, you think they're great questions, and then that could be a reason to click on that person's profile, send them a quick message, and maybe, you know, what else? who knows what happens, maybe you can uh, then uh, invite the other for, for a meeting to go a bit more in-depth on the topic. Roundtable uh, sessions are great for that too, you'll really meet other people, in the round table with your microphone and camera, get to know each other. It's a great way to also break out to uh, do a private meeting. And well, maybe the last thing to mention here, I think pretty cool is that our platform allows for organizations to uh, host all of their events, right? So not just one, and then you're done with the platform and you have to start from scratch again. No, you can include many events, even all your events, uh, all kinds of events, whether they're in person, on site, or online hybrid um, if you do that if you host your events in our platform people connecting on one event will see in one of the next events who is there that you've met before right so you go to the attendee list and you'll see right so these five people i've met at the previous event so that's a great way to see who you already know and who you perhaps don't yet know and uh, when you when you click on someone you've already spoken with you'll see the conversation you've had at the previous event and could just continue from there onwards so it's not just events standalone opportunities for network but with our platform you can really tie them together into one let's say year-round experience for attendees and all participants of your event that's it well i've answered five questions uh, who knows, there will be more and we do another video like this in the future. I hope this was useful. Um, thank you for watching.